All right, let's get some more analysis on this now with Peter de Poos. He is a leader of the fossil fuel transition program at E3G. He joins us live from Berlin. Welcome to you. Great to have you with us. Now, Germany, as we know, has often touted itself as a climate leader. So how is the government justifying the expansion of a coal mine? I, I, th I think it's important to sort of look a bit at background to German climate leadership. Um, that, that was really um, Germany in the first decade of this century where it was true climate leader. It has saw a big expansion on renewable capacities. The last 10 years, that's been a completely different story. Germany has been really um, uh, dropping the ball. It's seen a big collapse in growth rates and big depend increase in dependencies in um, uh, gas dependency on, on, on Russia. And already before the war, this government, this new government has been trying to pick this all up, but it's not something you can change overnight. So that's the sort of bigger story of what Germany is doing. It is still responding to the war in Ukraine with a big accelerator on its energy transition, but that doesn't solve today's immediate problems. And that's where an emergency measure was taken earlier this year to put a number of coal plants back online. What is important to point out though, is that the the coal that is under this village of Lutzera is actually not needed to keep those additional coal plants running for the short two-year period that has been agreed for them to um, run. So that's basically the paradox we have here. Big steps being taken forward in the energy transition, but in the meantime, uh, an inability of this government to, uh, to resolve this conflict in a better way mm -hmm. than, than they're doing now. So your argument essentially is, is that this expansion in Lutzerat is not actually necessarily necessary, but nevertheless, of course, we've got the war in Ukraine. It is raging on. How should Germany then get itself out of this energy quandary? So very specifically, the number of coal plants that they've, they've agreed to be putting uh, back online amounts to an additional emission, additional amount of emissions, about 61 million tons of CO2 um, in the next couple of years. Germany needs to think and, and, and come up with additional measures now to compensate for these, both in the energy sector or in other sectors. It's not easy. And actually, keeping the coal under Lutzerat in the ground was one of the ways in which the government had acknowledged it would have been able to do that. So. The excavation of coal under Lutzerat is making the problem Germany already has by putting more coal plants back online even bigger rather than smaller. Okay, let me ask you this then. We've seen that stiff opposition from the protesters there who had been holed up for a very long time there in Lutzerat. Does fighting climate change, though, justify breaking the law? I think... As, 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 as far as not non-violent protest goes, this, 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 this is an essential essential part of any 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 big societal protest movement and is, is, is completely legitimate and, 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 and necessary. Yes, I think I think that, that that's very clear. Right. How's going to play out? That's, that... Peter's... Sorry, do you go ahead? No apologies. <laughs> All right there, the view there of Peter Tapus, a leader of the Fossil Fuel Transition Programme at E3G, joining us from Berlin. Thank you so much.